So, ladies and gentlemen, uh, give you a little background. Very uh, few times in CBC TV or radio history that uh, a reporter has used the word nasty to describe a legal case, but this is what it is. It should be a new version of American Woman. Instead of saying, American Woman, stay away from me, it's basically saying, Burton Cummings now singing, former bandmates, stay away from my songs. According to CBC's uh, Rachel Firsty, there's been a nasty turn in a Guess Who fight uh, as Burton Cummings has decided to cancel agreements that let former bandmates who were touring as the Guess Who perform his songs. Now, uh, according to the report uh, published uh, Saturday the 13th, Burton Cummings is really, really uh, pissed off. Now, if anybody... Uh, doesn't know Burton Cummings was considered the uh, the main uh, singer of the band for years. When Randy Bachman left, he became the main singer-songwriter. So the two phases, he was there from the first. Now, Burton Cummings latest blow in his legal battle against the current lineup of the Guess Who, which I think they're celebrating their closer 65th birthday uh, this month, uh, is tarnishing the legacy of the famous Winnipeg rock band, a local m- music historian says, and could set the stage for similar riffs between bands and former members. Now, the band's ex-frontman has terminated agreements with performing rights organizations for every Guess Who song he wrote and published, which means fans of hits like American Woman or These Eyes won't be able to hear them played live in concert, according to a story published in Rolling Stone. Winnipeg musician, uh, music historian John Einerson said it's an unexpected move that shows the fight between Cummings and the remaining members of the band has taken such a nasty turn. What's always kind of burned Burton Cummings' butt is that Jim Cale and Gary Peterson, who were original members of the band, have been going out under the Guess Who name, Einerson said. He's, uh, Einerson has also uh, written extensively about the band. Now, he made these comments to Fade Fundle on CBC's Up to Speed this past Friday. But they're singing the songs that Burton sang, and he doesn't like that at all. Cummings has now taken a very benign music arm of the business that collects royalties for songwriters when their music is played on radio or in concert, and he's weaponized it, Einerson said. CBC News has asked Burton Cummings for comment, but nothing so far. Now, Cummings has been involved in a decades-long fight with bassist uh, bassist Cale and drummer Peterson, who are among the founding members of the Winnipeg Band, along with Cummings, and the uh, legendary guitarist Randy Bachman, who later uh, went to form of Brave Belt and BTO. Last year, Cummings and Bachman filed a lawsuit against Cale and Peterson accusing them of deceiving fans with a band touring under the Guess Who name. Cale has not performed with the latest incarnation of the band, which Bachman and Cummings' lawsuit refers to as the cover band, since 2016, and Peterson makes infrequent appearances with the group, according to the suit. But in her own court filing, Cale and Peterson argued they've always been up front about the band's numerous member changes and have never advertised Cummings and Bachman as being part of the current lineup. I think what Burton has a problem with is the fact is They're making money off his name, and the quality is not there. No offense. Now, however, Cummings' latest move means the band can perform some of the Guess Who's biggest hits. Cummings confirmed the move in Thursday's Rolling Stone story, saying the band will be sued every time they perform a song he wrote. He accused the band of taking his life story and pretending it's theirs. I'm willing to do anything to stop the fake band, Cummings was quoted as saying in a Rolling Stone article. Now, since nearly every venue in the States has agreements with performing rights organizations, the termination means most American venues can't host any performances of coming songs. It also means, however, that Cummings will lose out on royalties he normally earns from those performances. It's really hurting the legacy of the Guess Who, Einerson said. It's a terrible thing to do. The manager of the current Guess Who lineup, Randy Irwin, said they're willing to sit down with Cummings to negotiate, but whether or not that happens is up to him. It's devastating. He told CBC over the phone on Saturday, April 13th. My biggest concern is for Jim and Gary, the owners of the Guess Who trademark, and the band members and everybody else that associated with the performance of this band to be able to make a living and continue to work. Now, several shows in Florida and Alabama have been canceled since the band found out about the terminated agreements last Saturday on a day they were expected to perform, Irwin said. Since it was a weekend, They weren't about to contact Broadcast Music Incorporated, the performance rights organization the band had an agreement with to see if the songs had to be pulled. It's being, you know, damage control. 
We've been in contact with the venues for shows that are supposed to be occurring and consulting with our legal team. Now, they said the tour was supposed to have 70 or so shows in 2024. Not too bad for a bunch of old men nearing 80. Like I understand, he said Cummings approach is novel. In my 50 year plus years in the industry, I've never seen somebody weaponize the actual copyright. Anderson said other artists might now run into similar problems. It really opens up a whole floodgate of, you know, possibly a lot of negativity happening in a lot of artists who discover that they can't perform anymore because someone else is preventing them from doing it. Orwin said it's not only the band members who will take a financial hit, merchandise companies, venues that that have shows booked, promoters and venue staff will also lose out. A lot of people are being harmed by this, he said, including Cummings. He makes money every time they're out there working. It just doesn't feel right. Iverson said he thinks there's an element of jealousy in Cummings' move. It's not being motivated by money. It's really about the this very personal thing. He also said he doesn't buy Cummings' claim that fans are being duped into thinking they'll see him and Bachman in concert. In the 60s and 70s, no one ever knew who was in a band. It wasn't Burton Cummings and the guess who? Iverson said. That's one of the things that hurt Burton's solo career when he went on his own after the guess who? Well, a lot of people said... Well, who is he? By the way, that's only one person's opinion. I don't agree with that. I'm just quoting from a CBC article. Everybody knew Burton Cummings. He was fucking cute back then. Everybody knew Randy Bachman because he had a rumor going around. He uh, changed his religion to get in these pants of his future wife. But uh, Burton Cummings was a well-known singer across the world, especially in the 60s. And he showed up again, the famous uh, big break they had on a Johnny Cash show, draped in the Canadian flag, uh, uh, you know, uh, hand-me-down world and all that. But there's two phases of the Guess Who. The Randy Bachman, Burton Cummings version, then the Burton Cummings more poppy rock version. But here's the deal, ladies and gentlemen. Let's say somebody from Arizona takes my name, mimics this channel, and saying, oh, this is a tribute to the governor. He's doing this historical podcast on this Canadian channel. And uh, I'm not going to make as much as uh, he does on YouTube. We don't make much as YouTubers, especially uh, techs. And uh, it's a tribute, and it, he shouldn't be pissed off. Of course he'd be pissed off. It's, it's similar to plagiarism. You get a sound alike, okay? With Queen, you had Adam Lambert that was doing a Freddie Berkey tribute. You got Larry Gowing doing uh, uh, Dennis DeYoung uh, Stallings with Sticks. But like I said, that's... that's and, uh, Journey, uh, I mean, Steve Perry doesn't tour with Journey now, and I don't think everybody from Boston is touring with Boston. So you got to understand, ladies and gentlemen, Burton Cummings is an egotistical songwriter, so is Randy Bachman. But I think what this won't be solved because the riffs go way, way, way back. Burton Cummings is like a John Lennon and Paul McCartney. He sees himself, he's, he's a top 10 Canadian songwriter of all time, just like Randy Bachman. Because when you think about Canada, what was the first rock band from Canada you remember? Well, in Canada, in the States, it's a guess who. Even though Steppenwolf, uh, uh, the lead singer, was uh, Can- Canadian, and uh, Love and Spoonful, Zal- Zal Zanowski, was Canadian, but were never considered Canadian band, like same with uh, Blood, Sweat, and Tears, the lead singer. Uh, Neil Young's band was kind of the uh, the, the sequel to the Guess Who in relation to public acknowledgement, uh, you know, uh, of uh, the, the Canadian aesthetic. And the band, again, wasn't the band until later on in the early 70s. So the Guess Who were the, or the, the archetype Canadian band, or what he called the Western Canadian band. I think Burton Cummings is doing right. I wouldn't want anybody stealing my stuff. But like anything else, time doesn't heal all wounds. It wounds all heals, but it doesn't heal all wounds. So ladies and gentlemen, we'll keep you updated. We're doing this as a public service because uh, legal cases involving entertainment. No, uh, when Tiger Woods' girlfriend was going to sue him for like palimony, a multi-million dollar case, uh, you know, uh, things happen quickly in the entertainment industry. So ladies and gentlemen, don't forget, when you listen to the Guess Who song, there's again two phases. You got the Randy Bachman influence with Burton Cummings and Burton Cummings kind of, you know, Burton Cummings and the Guess Who. Like, when Paul McCartney started Wings, it really was the Beatles in a way, but it wasn't the Beatles. Same thing with Burton Cummings' Guess Who. It was the Guess Who, sure, but it wasn't really the Guess Who because Dominic Triano was in that as well. Very important uh, Canadian 
guitars. So ladies and gentlemen, have a great Sunday. And as we like to say in the North Shore Project, if you can't get along with your bandmates, sue them. Because no matter what happens, you're going to get free publicity. And sometimes free... You know, I don't think there's going to be a bunch of people burning uh, Guess Who albums. A lot of people are going to say, who's the Guess Who? You're like... A lot of Americans have never heard American Woman. I never heard it until Lenny Kravitz covered it. Because American Woman is basically saying, you know, you're, you know, you crackpot American slut, fuck off. So, I mean, maybe you can sing that for Donald Trump. I don't know, because yeah, most days he acts like a pussy anyway. So, have a good one. Bye.